Good afternoon. I'm Elder McQueen, Brother McQueen, Mr. McQueen, Coach McQueen, whatever you feel, uh, you feel, you know, uh, more comfortable calling me. Uh, welcome to Bread for Our Youth Ministry. Uh, Bread for Our Youth Ministry, of course, a lot of our lessons are, our lessons are targeted at younger people. However, everyone can be blessed by God's Word. Uh, I'm going to have a quick prayer before we start. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that some heart will be touched, Lord, after listening to this video, God, after reading the scriptures, God, that their life will be blessed. And that someone will realize, Lord Jesus, that their life has just begun, that they will just step out in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I want you to take a take a minute and look at the uh, board here. And I'm going to talk about the shield of faith. And if you look on the board here, all of these little pointed things here represent dots. They represent the fiery dots. And many of you sisters that uh, been listening to this video, or brothers listening to this video, you probably know what I mean when we talk about fiery dots. And you may be wondering, why is it that all these fiery dots seem to be coming at you all at one time? Not only do you have a question about why all these fiery dots are coming at the same time, but what really amazes you it's where the fiery dots come from. Usually, we expect the enemy to be up front, meaning basically we feel comfortable and secure that everyone behind us is our allies. But that doesn't seem to be the, the norm anymore. It seems like you could fiery dots come from the left, the right, up, down, everywhere. In other words, there are people who throw dots at you that you probably thought would never throw it. There are people who turn their back on you that would never, that would never do it. And because sometimes we hold people in such high esteem, we value, people want to we value God's word, we allow ourselves to get, we allow ourselves to be let down by people. Now, look at some of the fiery dots that may come out of strife, fear, temptation, shame, guilt, tiredness, beat down, worrying, feeling of insecure, being insecure, frequent headaches, frustration, depression, sickness, being lied on, being talked about, being mistreated, oh boy, being betrayed by a brother or by a sister, doubt, feeling of helplessness, feeling of hopelessness, not forgiving yourself, you made mistakes in life and not wanting to forgive yourself constantly. Reminding yourself of your mistakes. Are people throwing dots at you constantly reminding you of how you messed up last year? So many fiery dots that come at us. But we have to, but if we would just hold up the shield of faith, that all the fiery dots that come at us would just bounce off because none of them will move us. None of them will cause us to give up. None of them will cause us to get off the course. Now, the title of my lesson here is going to be that God has directed me Sisters, stop attending the devil's pity parties. Sisters, stop attending the devil's pity parties. This is the title of our lesson.
Sister, stop attending the devil's pity parties. You must learn to follow God for yourself. You must learn that it is okay in the early stage of your life to depend a lot on the preachers and the teachers for certain things. But as you mature, you must learn to follow God for yourself. You must understand that some points in your life, sisters, there are people who are going to reject you. There are people you're going to try to be nice to, but for some reason they're going to reject you. And not just reject you, probably talk about you, prosecute you. Okay? Uh, you may find yourself being rejected by people and I would say this, you have to learn to use rejection as a tool of determination. In other words, if you were rejected for a job, okay, uh, you were rejected by an individual, okay, then you, you determine that, you know what, even though I was rejected here, God has a plan for me over here. You must use rejection as a positive tool to be more determined. Also, if the preacher sister don't speak life on you, you must speak life on yourself. You may not be the preacher's favorite daughter, okay? You may, but at one time you may have been, you and your husband may have been the preacher's, the pastor's uh, number one family here. And all of a sudden the tire is turning and now they're acting a little bit silly towards you. And now you think, wow, you know, we used to be real close. And now you don't have that close with your leadership anymore. And now you, you, you don't know how to deal with it. Well, I'll say this. You really don't need it. Maybe you have grown to a point in life that God wants you to begin to, to, God wants you to, begin to believe Him more for yourself. Sisters, stop giving people so much power over you. Stop telling everyone your business. Not everyone has your best interest in mind. There are some people, believe it or not, who would rather see you fall flat on the face, roll over your back, and not get up. And would feel better about you being that way because it makes them feel better about themselves. And they compare you with themselves and say, okay, you know what? Wow, I'm not, I'm not that bad. Look, look where she's at, okay? So you have to learn, understand that not to give people so much power and authority over you. Speak faith. Speak positive about your life. Speak positive. If you're not going to speak positive, don't speak at all. If you're not going to speak positive, just don't speak at all. Take some time to be quiet. When you think you're ready to speak faith, then you begin to speak. Because words cause things to take place. Once you begin to speak things, words bring forth things. Words are spirits. Speak positive or just be quiet. Learn, sister, to be quiet and focus on your goals. Don't tell everybody about your goals. Everybody is not as enthusiastic as you are about your goals. And again, there's some people you think are your friend who may not necessarily be as enthusiastic about your goals. So learn to sometimes be quiet and sometimes and just work on what God has given you to work on. And then, then when you get the end result, let it be a surprise to people. Sister, it is not wise to compare yourself with the, other, the next sister. It's not wise to prepare yourself. To, 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 to be, thank God for who you are. Be content with who you are. Ask God, God, this, this is me. This is what you give me to work with God. Now God, work with me. And begin to, begin to feel good about yourself. There are times, sisters, 
when 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 the 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 fiery dart will be thrown at you from the left to the right to the right the different correct different darts thrown at you don't look to get revenge don't look to get revenge on people don't become so bald of an anger that you become so captivated by this desire to get revenge that you now you become so blind that God can't God can't guide you into where he wants you to be. Because you become so blinded by, you know, people who have mistreated you that your, your only thought is, I'm going to get revenge somehow. When God is trying to God is knock on your door and say, hey, sister, you know what? I got something for you. But you, become, you can become so blind in your attempt to plan ways to get revenge on people. It may be time for an attitude adjustment. It may be time for an attitude adjustment, sister. Cut the cord. Cut the cord. Cut the cord. Time for an attitude adjustment. The same old attitude with the same old negative results is just nonsense. Are you still wrapped up into your past years of rejection, hurt, anger, and frustration? Think about this. Think about how long you've been holding on to different things, how long you've been wallowing in pity about things that didn't turn out the way you thought it should turn out about the people who mistreated you, or people who rejected you, and how that has become so much a part of your life that God is trying to steer you in a different direction, but you're still caught up into that, those things. And the enemy will give you all the evidence you need to wallow in pity. But it's time to stop attending Satan's pity parties. Time to get up, wipe your tears, and move forward. Producing good, producing good fruits is the best remedy for putting your critics to shame. Again, producing good fruits is the best remedy, sisters, for putting your critics to shame. Galatians 5 and 22. Again, as Satan began to throw the fiery darts at you, people began to accuse you. The Bible said that the devil is the cute of the brother. People accuse you of things that you don't even, you, you, you have no idea, but they accuse you of doing these things. And you wonder, man, why did why would anybody want to accuse me? I'm just a nice person. Being nice doesn't exempt you from being lied on. Being nice, being a Christian doesn't exempt you from being, having dust thrown at you. But the best way, but producing good fruits is the best remedy for putting your critics to shame. Talk about the former conversations. Let's talk about the old man and the new man. Which one is operating more in your life, sister? The old man or the new man? The former conversations produces death. Because the former 
conversations is really the flesh. And the flesh doesn't bring forth anything good. The flesh itself can bring forth death. The present conversation should produce life through the new man. There goes the battle. The flesh and the spirit. The old man and the new man. Constantly battling for position. Which one in your life is dominating? The former con so now here we go, sister. The, and the former conversations would go something like this. You would talk about all of the bad things that happened to you, you know, and how bad people are, and how you like to get this one back, or how you can't see why people would hurt you like this, and all these things. That would be the former conversations that you would be partakers of because, because those are the kind of conversations that the flesh would carry. But with the new man, the present conversations go like this. Yes, I, I might have been through this, but I'm moving forward. I can do all things to Christ Jesus. God has a plan for my life. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit down and wallow in pity. I am going to believe God's word. I'm going to step on in faith, and God I'm going to, and God is going to do things in my life. That's the conversation of the new man. Versus the conversation of the old man. The former man, the old man, would want you to constantly, constantly dwell on your failures. Dwell on the negativity that have been done to you. And convince you that there's no getting up. But the new man says, God has a plan. God has your best interest in mind. God has not forgotten you, sister. God has not forgotten your address. God has not forgotten your name. The pastor might have forgotten your name. The court pastor might have forgotten your name. The elder might have forgotten your name. Okay, your name may be, your name may never come up. The, the, the people on your block might have forgotten your name. But the Father in heaven has not forgotten your, your name. He got some things with your name written on it. So you may ask the question sometimes, why is this, why are these things happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why is all this happening to me? You may ask a question like, why is this happening to me? Where was my help when I need it? When I really need people to help me, where are they? I can really use their help now. They say, they say anytime I need help, I can find them. You're the question we ask ourselves sometimes. Why do I feel so helpless at times? Those are the questions you ask yourself. Why do I feel so helpless at times? Why do I feel so weighted down at times? Oh wow, God must be really angry with me. God's love for you does not change. God's love for you, sister, has no conditions. There's no conditions for God's love. Now man love as this I've seen people change. I've seen I've seen I've seen deacons change, I've seen pastors change, I've seen and I'm telling you, I've seen some of the I I have seen some of the highest ranking people in church be some of the nastiest, meanest people at times when they allow their flesh to raise up. So man change with moods, but God's love for us never changes. This is why we strive to become more like God and not more like man. Because see, we strive to become more like man. The problem is when man begins to act like a barbarian, we say, oh. But remember, man is just that, just man. And man has limitations. The minister has the, the, the digging has limitations, the president has limitations. 
the pastor has limitations. Even though sometimes the pastor might want you to think he's a superman, but really he has limitations like anybody else. Now, you may say something like, God must be really disappointed with, 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 with me because of the past mistakes you made in life or because some of your friends turned their back on you. You may, you, things may happen in your life, okay, uh, and things do happen in life. And people do judge things ignorantly many times. Oh, what about this one? He lied to me just to get his way. You may have a young man that lied to you, sister, just to get you to submit to him in the bedroom. You got pregnant, all of a sudden, he's, he's nowhere around. You're angry, you got, you got the child, you're raising the child by yourself. Let go of the anger. Love your child. Let go of your anger. And, and God, because God has a plan for your life. But if you don't get rid of that anger and that unforgiveness, then what happens is you, you have blinders on. And you know what? You can't see or you can't hear what God's saying to you. I refuse to trust anyone after, after what happened to me. I refuse to trust the preacher because I've been to this church and the preacher hurt me. I refuse to t I, I refuse to trust another man because this guy lied to me. I, re I, I refuse to trust a black man because he mistreated me. I refuse to trust a white man or whatever. You know, or whatever. All the all the things that the thoughts that come to your mind because you, you go through a situation in life that you, the emotions take control and all of a sudden you decide that you know what. Nobody can be trusted. But it's time to stop attending the devil's pity party because he'll constantly, the devil will constantly give you and he'll constantly send people to you that will just help you to this wall in pity. You know why they want you to wall in pity? Because they feel good about themselves. And also because the devil sent them. God sends people to you that are going to encourage you to move forward. God sends people to you that are going to help you to move forward. The devil sends people to you that are going to try to get you to stay right there where you started. Because they really don't want to see you go anywhere. Here's how you tell. When you start, sister, when you begin to make some progress in your life, I don't care if you end up at your workplace, I don't care if you're in the church, it, it can be whatever. When you start to make some really good progress in your life, don't be surprised who gets attitude. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised who all of a sudden uh, looks at you differently or uh, whatever because God is doing things for you. Develop an attitude with great expectations, sister. You have to develop an attitude that you are going to look forward to great expectations. Your expectations to be high. High expectations. Develop an attitude with high expectations. Sister, you have very limited, you have very limited control over what people think about you. It, doesn't, it really doesn't really matter what the people think about you. It doesn't really matter what, what people think about you. Because people have enough problems with themselves and none of us have really so much, so much, or really so much together, we really have that much time to worry about other people. If anybody would take some time to try to get themselves together, we'll probably have a better world today. We'll probably have a better church today. The preacher spends countless hours trying to get the congregation together, but he needs to take time, get in the corner sometime, and check himself out. The deacon, when people walk into the sanctuary, you know, if he sees someone with a tie, you know, uh, crooked or whatever, he'll stop and help them with their tie, you know, and that's a courtesy. 
But also, every now and again, the deacon can look down and look at his shoes, go in the mirror and check his tie out. See, sometimes what we have in churches, leaders like to, like to be like secret squirrel. They're checking everybody out, but not checking their own mess. And they become a mess. And then they make people become a mess. So you have less control over how people feel about you. But I'd be more concerned about how God feels about me. And we'll find out some of that in the scriptures in a few minutes. No sister that God's love for you will never change. God will always love you with an unconditional love. Give your heart to only one person, and that's the God. Perhaps the enemy was having fun with you, and your mind, you know, telling you that at church that, you know, you're not someone special. People make you feel small and unimportant in the church. The pastor gives accolades to his buddies over here and over here, but, but doesn't acknowledge you. But God has a reward for you that's greater than any, any pastor or preacher can ever give you. Look to God for yours, not the man. Women, stop attending the devil's pretty party. Psalms 8 and 4, step, kind of give us an idea of what God thinks of you. Psalms 8 and 4 says, Who is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visited him. For thou hast made him little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. God has created man, man is just a little lower than the angels. God, sister, God is mindful, God is very mindful of you. Yeah, man might. You know, man might sometimes uh, forget about you, you know. Uh, sometimes people have a tendency outside, outside of the church and inside the church as well to look up the people more who they think have money. Look up the people that they think more so have power, okay, and things of this nature. But God has no respect to person. God is mindful of you. And God is preparing something for you. So God wants you to get up from the stool of pity pity. Don't pay no more than there were pity parties. God said it's time for you to get up, wipe the tears, and start moving. Ephesians 6 to 16 says, Above all things, take on the shield of faith. Above all things, take on the shield of faith. Of faith. Take on the shield of faith. Take on the shield of faith. All the dots coming at you, the shield of faith, you wrap it around you, will protect you. Ephesians 6 and 16, above all, taking on the taking the shield of faith. You will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. All of the, you, so you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. So when all these darts come at you, speak faith. When people turn their back on you, speak faith. When things go wrong, speak faith. When people you expect to be there for you don't show up, speak faith. Because see, when they don't show up, there's no mistake that it was God. And God will not let man get his glory. God will not let man take credit for what he do in your life. That's why oftentimes within the body of Christ, people want to have ownership to what God do for you. 
That's why there are times when, when people can't control you, they get an attitude with you. Sometimes when people can't have you do exactly what they want you to do, as pertains to your life, they begin to get an attitude with you, and you can become so choked up about it, or you can realize, you know, I'm not going to let that bother me. Stop attending the devil's pity party. Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to the world, this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which is, which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Because these dots are coming at us every day, sisters, because these dots come at you every day, sisters, you have to constantly renew your mind. Remind yourself that you're not in this battle by yourself. Remind yourself that God is with you. Oh, you need to say, well, you know, you say, my, oh, boy, this is, this is bad, this is going bad, this is going bad, this is going bad. You know, uh, people that I thought was my friends are talking about me. You know, the, the people that you're acting, acting, just not, uh, you know, the, the thing is just going, and, and, but through all that, renew your mind. Constantly renew your mind. Constantly renewing your mind. So your mind can be clear when God says, you know what, this is what I have to you, and this, this, I have this for you, and this is how you're going to get it. But your mind has to be clear. You can't, mind, you can't be cluttered with so much stuff. First Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober. So to be sober, again, also to be sober, you have got to ensure that your mind will be renewed. So that be sober. Be diligent. See, be sober. People come to you with a bunch of foolishness, negativeness. Oh, sister, I heard that anybody who goes through this, you need to do this. I heard that, you know, you had to go down and check on this. I heard that people that need to go down there don't get what they want. They come back empty-handed. But all of these negative things that people are throwing in, into you, right, it causes you to become drunk. Become drunk to worry. Drunk to frustration. Drunk to fear. Drunk to doubt. But 1 Peter 5 8 said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom you may devour. He wants to upset you so, so you will say and do stupid things. Just that simple. He wants you to say things like, oh, I said, this is it. Everybody's acting, no, 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 this, everybody's against you, you know, everybody's against you. Oh, you know, look, you never get your degree. You know, you're never going to get married. You're never going to get this. You're never going to get that. You know, say all these thoughts that come in your mind here. Okay, 